Hello, and welcome to the Central Park Portal. Today we'll be going over the Ticket Hub and how to submit a ticket via our Central Park application. To begin the process, you can select Submit Ticket, Hardware Ticket. Here you will identify which asset you're looking to submit a ticket on. There's a couple of ways you can approach this, simply by going window by window to locate the asset that you're wanting to open a ticket on, or using the above filter options, whether it be serial number, asset tag, or host name. After you select selected the asset, now you will designate who will be the point of contact for your service request. As you can see here, there are three opportunities to enter contact names, an on-site contact, a technical contact, and a coordinating contact. They can be all the same, However, we do like to recommend that as many contacts be made available as possible to expedite your service request. Now, there are a few options on how to select a contact name. You can select from a dropdown of preloaded contacts within the ticket, or you can add brand new contacts by simply adding first and last name, email address, or phone number. Now, if you are working Amongst a team, for example, server team or storage team, feel free to enter the first name as storage, last name team, the group shared email box and a shared phone number. And this will be made available for any future tickets that you may be entering in. Once you've designated who the contact person is, select next. And now you'll validate the address on where you're requiring service. It's always good to double check this information just to make sure that our system is correct. Also, if there's any unit number, suite number, building number, or floor number, that will also be crucial to make sure that our engineers or any parts that may be shipped out are arriving at the correct location. Be sure to also include any on-site access instructions, specifically if there are any contacts or security measures in place that our engineers will need to be following when they arrive on site. Another crucial area is shipping location and attention. There may be some cases where we do need to ship parts directly to your site. At this point, you'll want to enter in at whose attention we're going to be sending the part to, any special instructions, perhaps a loading dock that it needs to be left at, or security desk, and same as above where you validate the address on where that part will be shipped to. Once you have confirmed this information, select next. And now we'll enter in your specific request. The first option here is selecting severity. As you can see, there are three different levels of severity that you, there are to choose from. A severity one is an incident that is impacting your business directly, hard down type scenario. We do recommend that any severity one type incident be called into our support center directly, so that way you get the swiftest action possible from our teams. Severity two would be service according to your standard service level agreement that you currently have on contract, whether it's a four hour response, next calendar day, next business day, etc. And a severity three we use for planned events. Perhaps there's a maintenance event happening at your site that you would like Park Place to be aware of and prepare for in the event that as systems come back up, any failures may occur. Severity three is for those pre-planned events. For this example, we'll use severity two. The next option is your request type, on-site or parts only. On-site meaning full service, our engineer will arrive to your site with part in hand to perform the replacement, or parts only, where only the part is necessary to be shipped directly to your site and someone from your team will complete the replacement themselves. The next is a short description. Now here you can manually enter in a short description of the issue that you're facing or select from the dropdown from some of the common failures that we normally encounter. Next under problem notes, you can add additional details under this particular area. The next area is a reference number. We do understand that a lot of companies do use internal reference numbers or ticket numbers to track any open issues. We recommend always adding this information so that way when our teams are interacting with your groups, they're able to reference this particular number and it's easier for communications back and forth. Now, the final step here is attaching any files, log files, screenshots, etc. We always recommend having this information available upfront as it allows our teams to act on your ticket that much faster. 
some of the common items that we do see perhaps delay a service request are log information and screenshots to where our team can truly isolate the issue and make a recommendation on what needs to be replaced or repaired. Please ensure to attach those files here up front. However, if that is not available during the ticket submission process, we'll show you another area where you can add this information. Now, once this information has been entered, hit next, and it will bring you to a final overview screen. Simply validate all the information that you've entered is correct, select submit, and at that point you will receive a confirmation email advising all this information that you have entered and it'll now enter a queue for our support group to action from there. Now that you've submitted a ticket, let's check on status. Here there's a few areas where you can check their current open tickets, tickets that have been open in the last seven days, and you also have the ability to review tickets that have been closed in the last seven days. So to check on status, let's go to the current tickets that are open. And here you'll see a listing of tickets that are currently open under your account. Once you identified the ticket that you're looking to review, simply select the ticket number and it'll bring you to this overview screen. As you can see, it's similar to the ticket submission overview where you can see contract details, the equipment location, who the particular contacts are, along with the asset details and service level that you can expect service. You can also see our progress tab up above. This will show you where the ticket currently stands in our process. Once it was submitted, what date and time, who opened the ticket, any action plans that may be developed. Next, you'll see the service area which will demonstrate and show you who the engineer is that assigned. If any parts are going to be shipped, it'll include the tracking details within this area. And finally, ticket completion once your service request has been completed. To show you a little bit more on a ticket tracker, let's show you a quick visual. As you can see, as your ticket progresses, you're able to see who the assigned engineer is to your ticket, what time they're scheduled to arrive, when they're en route, their arrival, as well as when they've completed work. You can also see any parts that have been shipped out along with a tracking number that does include a hyperlink to the specific carrier for you to monitor the tracking of the package. Now, as you can see, there are a variety of tabs within the actual ticket. Description will show that short description that you entered while you were opening the ticket. Solution notes will be available upon ticket closure. The interactions tab will have a record of any communications back and forth between our teams and your groups. You can include commentary to address any questions that may have come up in the interactions tab, whether that be questions regarding the logs that were submitted, screenshots, access type questions, all that can be communicated within the portal here via the add comment section. Simply select the classification. You can request to leave the ticket open, close the ticket, you can also request follow-up, whether it be immediately or at a scheduled time. Add your commentary and select save comment. Our team will then action your commentary accordingly and take whatever next steps may be relevant. The next area is the activities portion. Under activities, you can see when the original ticket was opened, action plan creation, along with their start time and completion, this will also be an area where it'll show you the engineer's on-site time that goes in tandem with the ticket tracker that's up above. And the final section is any attachments. As mentioned before, if any screenshots or logs or any pertinent information may not be available at the ticket submission part of the process, you're able to go within the ticket hub and add the attachments here later. Now the final section of the ticket area here is the closed ticket section. Here, you're able to review any closed tickets that may have existed on your current contract, where you can review which assets may have had particular trouble tickets, locations, along with their created dates and other relevant data. Within this information, you can also export for any internal auditing purposes. Now, for any escalation needs during both normal business hours and after hours, we recommend contacting our support center directly by phone. This can ensure the swiftest action possible. They can then escalate to the corresponding regional manager or director 
or if your concern is brought forth after hours, they can reach out to the on-call manager in order to address your concerns quickly. Our support center is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. So there will always be an agent available to assist you with your concerns. Thank you for your time in reviewing the Ticket Hub portion of today's Central Park demonstration. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to your account manager or client service manager who can assist you further.